Hi, I'm Dr. Elise Day. Living with pelvic pain is difficult and finding the right care is a challenge. My colleagues and I are thrilled to announce the launch of the book, Facing Pelvic Pain. This book has been a career long dream and puts the tools of 45 experts in 18 specialties into the hands of people living with pelvic pain. People with pain and their providers often don't realize the full realm of possibilities causing pelvic pain. Pain associated with female anatomy includes endometriosis, ovarian cyst, prolapse of the female organs, hormonal, infectious, and neurological causes of pelvic pain, and multiple less common causes of clitoral pain. Pain associated with male anatomy receives less attention in the medical literature. It can be even harder finding answers. The prostate can become inflamed or can block the urinary stream. In younger men, and in some women, the bladder neck can be an important factor, but it can be important to look beyond the prostate to find answers. There are treatments for post vasectomy pain, for varicocele, for pain in the penile shaft, and pain associated with sexual activity. General urological organs can cause pain in all genders. For example, a stone lodged in the ureter, incomplete emptying of the bladder, an ulceration of the bladder associated with interstitial cystitis, for which the American Urological Association has published helpful management guidelines, or even a cyst next to the urethra. Gastrointestinal pain is a common contributor and includes irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, constipation, diverticulitis, obstructed defecation, cancer, anal fissure, hernia, and hemorrhoids. The human pelvis has a rich supply of blood vessels. When these are prevented from draining properly, pelvic venous congestion can cause vague pain that mimics other conditions. Often, therefore, providers do not consider this as a cause. The musculoskeletal system is balanced in the pelvis and affects it in many ways. Pelvic floor physical therapists can make a major difference in pelvic pain in all genders, intervening on increased muscle tone and spasm within the pelvic floor muscles, and the abdominal wall, as well as a multitude of other structural contributors, for example, injury. They are expert at identifying musculoskeletal causes of pain, including the inner abdominal wall and pelvic floor muscles. Physical therapists treat with hands-on therapy as well as educate on matters such as ergonomics, stretching, and posture. These therapists can work wonders with pelvic pain in a holistic manner with minimal risk. Bony causes of pain are often missed in evaluation and can be identified on physical exam, review of history, and imaging. Physical exam is also important in neurological disease. Problems with the nerves can affect the pelvis on many levels. The central nervous system involves the brain and the spinal cord. When a disc herniates from the bony spine into the spinal canal, it can impact the central spinal cord as well as the peripheral nerves as they exit leading to a radiculopathy. Peripheral nerves from higher up on the spine serve the pelvic structures. Tight muscles can even compress nerves directly. A tethered spinal cord that doesn't move up as the body grows, a spinal tumor, or a Tarlof cyst next to the nerves can lead to pelvic pain, as well as disorders of bowel, bladder, sexual function, and leg symptoms. Fortunately, mapping of the area of pain can provide information as to which nerves have been affected. This can include the genital skin, but also the nerves eliciting from the spine above and the abdominal wall nerves, which can be entrapped in an incision at the time of surgery. The peripheral nerves can also be damaged diffusely. This is called peripheral neuropathy. A type of peripheral neuropathy, small nerve fiber neuropathy, has many causes, but is important to identify because sometimes it is reversible, for example, in the case of gluten sensitivity. These small fibers transmit pain, but also serve organ function. 
Therefore, people may have dysfunction of blood pressure, heart rate, heart burn, and bowel, bladder, and sexual function in addition to widespread pain. Rheumatologic diseases such as lupus pictured here and even systemic vasculitis can lead to systemic pain in association with pelvic pain. It is our goal that people with pelvic pain have as many resources as possible to treat and cure their conditions. This includes comprehensive tables describing medications for pelvic pain and information about exams, diagnostic tests, and imaging. Evaluation can become complex. Tools such as the Facing Pelvic Pain Treatment Map provide a list of most of the tests and treatments out there. The MAP Research Network Body Map and the International Pelvic Pain Society History Questionnaire provide a visual way to communicate your pain. All these tools provide a simple way to keep track of and communicate your situation efficiently. Special considerations apply to children with pelvic pain, pelvic pain and those with disability, pain during sex, the psychological impact of pain, and the impact of pain on one's loved ones. Central nervous system pain processing is impacted by psychological stressors. Therefore, psychological tools can be an important part of pain treatment. When pain is not going away, interventions can include pain stimulators and pumps, or even methods using the brain to control the pain. The important thing is, there is help out there. And thanks to our expert authors, we have done our best to provide it in writing. Facing Pelvic Pain is in the latest group of the Facing series published by Ted Stern and the MGH Psychiatry Academy. We've made this book affordable and accessible to all on Amazon and truly hope those who need it will hear about this resource, Facing Pelvic Pain. Thank you.